Rafaela is my mother's name. She loves her Juan Jose. Mother is a matriarch. Oh, what more can I say? Together they raised three children. Mario, come on and rest. They live near De Janeiro. On a Mona da Vinci bed. I'm gonna eat my rice and beans. I'm gonna suck a chili dough away down in Spanish town in the Spanish fall. Senoritas, they gather round, 'cause they think that he's a Mexican. But I know so much better, and I'm a holding here the proof. Don Juan is a gringo boy. Not telling us the truth, but he loves his rice and beans. He's gonna eat a chili dough away down in Spanish town, in the Spanish fall. Vaya. I want you to meet Margarita. Margarita, she is calling me, and I love to hear my name. Out the lights and I bring on the wine. It's fiesta time again. You know I love my Portuguese, 'cause she shows me what to do. All the roads they lead to Mexico, Mexico, but they bring me back to you. I love my rice and beans. She's gonna suck my chili dough away down in Spanish town in the Spanish fall. Can I feel it in my blood? I can hear Allende still crying now. But they nip him at the bar.
They're talking in the alleys of old San Juan, old San Juan. The soldier's gonna walk the trail. Big sombreros see them everywhere. Zapata lands in jail. Ain't gonna eat no rice and beans. Ain't gonna suck no chili dough. Spanish town in the Spanish fall. One, two, three, four. something man this is a shame you know I don't I don't read anything anymore I can't see I'm drinking Lion Up, the pop drink of Ethiopians. <laughs> this is Radio Ethiopia. Yeah. 
Uh, what was how that one go? Slavery, that one. Do you remember? Play it, play it. Do you remember slavery? Do you remember slavery? Still it's happening all around me. But I don't remember slavery. Long ago in my country. Long ago there was slavery. There were color and there was sight. Now it's something more towards light. Anything that happens to take me from the light is slavery from the light is slavery this will never happen to me that was a lot of fun we're doing um king biscuit hour and i think that's really cool because my boyfriend did it too Oh, I love this so 
Put brave it. What's that song we're doing that to? We're just making this up now. This is just so I don't forget later. And what <laughs> doesn't really matter what we do at this point, right? This is what you know. Like I like going to new towns because we always make up something. But now we figure out this real cool one. We're going to work out here and see. It says, "Ill, um, mine, nation." It's like ill, mal, sick, like flower, flowers of evil. <laughs> it has been. So, it's our bicentennial song. And it's cool because we're what, writing it in DC. I mean, um, blab it. The wall is high. The black bond. My arms in the swaddling clothes And I know soon That the sky will split And the planets will shift Bulls of jade will drop And existence will stop
something when I used to bring my little my little look like, brownie camera to Stones concerts I never asked them for shit I just I didn't care even if it came out just black I knew what it was Let me tell you something. You got a rough time bucking with me because I've been everything. I've been the rock and roll star's girlfriend. I've been the, the rock writer. And uh, what else was I? There was something else. Yeah, book clerk. A fa and a great fan. I know, I know all the stuff you're supposed to do. I know all about lighting matches at the end if you really love it. Everything. So... <laughs> So I, you know, you, you, you're under a lot of pressure when you're with me. <laughs> Aren't I a devil? <laughs> oh, I love this silver tape. They have it at all rock stars, always have it all over them. It's all over their, the back of their Les Pauls. You know, this, this thick silver tape. That's how you know, like when it's, somebody's really in rock and roll, they got silver tape on, big wad of silver tape on something. Oh, my first silver tape, I'm so proud. That was, well, that was pretty funny. Um, let me see, what's, what's a joke? Do I have any other good jokes? Oh, here's one. <laughs> this is a scream. <laughs> um, Donna Lynn, why do mice have small balls? Because most of them can't dance. I knew she'd get it. <laughs> Beach is a beach where women love other women. Late afternoon, streaming hotel, just at the quiet row. Since you away, I was looking for you. Are you gone, gone? 
one of the things you got to do, like, you know, when you're doing this, is like you have to talk to all these all these people, you know, they interview and stuff, and they always say, well, what's it like now, you know? It's a, well, now I'm starting to get the point. Now I'm starting to get the answer. Then you, you get the whole bunch of people give you, um, the whole bunch of people turn you on. The radio comes. Um, uh, the, you know, the America's prize groupies come. And what else happens? You get presents. It's fun. <laughs> what I'm waiting for is the mink jacket. Girls will be girls. <laughs> Bob Marley's hot, ain't he? <laughs> I just, I don't know why I just, I just thought of him. I guess, I don't know, it's because I'm getting these, these things, I'm getting all these, do you see that? It looks, that's what happened last night that I thought was a shooting star. <laughs> oh God, more shooting stars. I saw a shooting star in Jamaica, it was pink.
Uh, alright, well. What do you think? Uh, you don't have, I mean, what, what's on your mind? Anything? Oh, I know what, you, what it is. It's um, the inside of a... Uh, wait, I'll get it in a minute. I'll help you. Oh, you know when you have the television on and it's the last show and it makes that, that thing that has like a circle and then it's got... Ch -ch 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 and it's just... Mm -hmm. Oh, please, please. A late movie. Anything. Gorgo. Anything. So, mm, that's what it's like when that's what it's like when you go home. Back to the old hotel. One Ramad in after another. <laughs> what a hard luck story. <laughs>
me clue you in something about all these articles, you know, that like talk all about this poetry stuff, you know. That's great and everything, but the history of like poet, real poets is like been like, poets have been, you don't have to, you don't have to sit quiet and respect poetry, because poets, a good poet never did. Francois Villon murdered a barber, <laughs> teasing the hair of the Lord, went running, he, uh, he got guillotined, Nerval hung himself, ate, I mean, you know, they ate hashish, they were crazy. They did poetry readings and people, they'd get so moved, they'd like start slashing their bodies and stuff. Mayakovsky had like 100,000 Russian, you know, revolutionist young boys screaming and, and women like, you know, throwing their, you know, opening up their dresses for him and everything. I mean, poets, like, you know, they've, they've, they've been where it's at, you know, it's like rock, rock and roll stars, you know. They just didn't, they, the Stratocaster just wasn't invented.
obviously, <laughs> obviously we don't know that song yet, but we, we always, what we always try to do going from town to town is like, we're, we always try to make up a new song, like we made up a, a song in Boston for you here, and now we're making up one here. And so by the time, we're, then we're going down south, we had to practice, you understand, right? All I could feel see was an elephant. Did you ever see an elephant graveyard? It's just like teeth. It's like you know all this ivory. It's, it's really it's like it's like the, all these like gray leather like gray leather hills studded with ivory teeth. It's really God. An elephant graveyard is. Um, I was walking to the elephant graveyard. Go to go to do the elephant graveyard. Oh, no, 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 do the elephant graveyard. And what did I see? What did I see? But a screen. A screen is always a convenient way to get out of a jam. <laughs> what you do is, what the, that was actually, I'm starting it like I can't even, I can't even pull it because I, can, I have to pull something on myself in order to pull it. Now I've got the handle on this. I know what I was up to. What I was going to do is make a screen and then project another story so I could get out of the elephant story. Now that I told him myself, what am I going to do now? There must be... Is there any, like, story that you... Or any... What would you like to know? Anything you'd like to know about or anything? New York? Lizards? New York? Iguanas? What else do you want to know about? How did Rimbaud die? Yeah. Sign? Possibilities. All right, from that, anything else? Brian Jones, um, Rambo, uh, Meatballs. Dylan. Um, um, all right, okay. I got all the information. I'm like a human computer. What did I dream out of my window? What did I dream when I was on my knees in a pair of blue Dr. Denton's? What was I praying for to come close to me? I was all I, I was real I was real like a religious kind of child and um Actually, it wasn't any particular church or anything. It's just that I used to like just walk around like it's great. I felt like a Hopi or something. I was like, you know, I was in Philadelphia, and I was like, I'd miss school. My mother would send me off to school, and I'd just go buzzing around in spaceships and talk to you know these huge tortoises would come out of the water, ponies going through green fields, and I and I'd always miss school. My mother would say, well, "What'd you do?" I don't know. It's like Mulberry Street, you know. I didn't, I, I didn't know what to tell her, you know. It was just, uh, um, so like, um, <laughs> so I used to get it beatings all the time. So I, I figured I'd better arrange a device so that, like, I could, like, um, you know, sort of like st stuff it in a cup, <laughs> um, so like, you know, I could function. So um, I tried out all these religions because I figured. I figured that the best person to know how to like control yourself. See, it's like I had like spastic illumination. You know, it's like a control, control. I get illuminated in in, in in biology class. You know, and it's like you know, the teacher tells me to cut a frog, and I was like, experience evolution. I'm not gonna cut a brother. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, where was I at? So. Uh, <laughs> um, I can't even re I can't even imagine what I'm up to, <laughs> but um, anyway. So like, um, uh, where was I? Could, uh, anybody listening? <laughs> where was I? Do you remember? Yeah, but before that, oh, in a cup. Yeah, that's right. Form. But where? How old was I? 
Oh, church, church. I tried to go to church. That's what I figured. I figured the only guy that really could get me out of this jam was God, because he was like, you know, you know, really up there, you know. So I figured, you know, when you when you want a little monarchy, you go to the king. So like I, I spent hours and hours saying these prayers, you know, hours, hours and hours and hours. And I started going to church, and they'd always give me this thing like about. Um, you know, I'd study and study, and I'd pray and pray and pray for hours, and I'd, but every time I'd pray, my illuminations would go away. It was real weird that instead of, like, feeling like this, I'd feel, like, desperate, you know? That was because Jim Morrison wasn't out at the time, you know? I was like, I didn't know you couldn't petition the Lord with prayer. I was just like, spending, spending hours and hours and hours and hours. Anyway, what it did to me sort of was, like, get me to the point where, like, um, I just... I just couldn't connect anymore. And it was like I always felt outside of everything. And um, art, art helped me out because it's, it was like driving me crazy. So like art put it in a form. Like I'd see all this stuff like, um, like uh, albino spiders and stuff like that. <laughs> Walking down the street, almost get hit by taxi cabs. <laughs> so I had to do something. That's how I started doing art. And. Uh, then I used to draw these down, get these demons down, you know, I got pretty good at it. I could exercise them. I'd, see, I'd hear a bloop, and I had it right down. You know, it was like calligraphy. So anyway, um, uh, then the calligraphy got, tricked me, and it got, started getting glossaries and definitions and rhythms and stuff like that. And that's how I got into, like, a lot of language stuff and words and burrows and all that kind of stuff and, and rumbo and all that kind of stuff. But Rimbo, I mean, he was like really into that and everything. But the thing that really, really got him was 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 music. He died looking for the um. He see the thing about Rimbo is like the word. He like had so much in him, you know. He had like all this like mania in him, and everybody like gets it all wrong. They think like you know he was just like this like little faggot poet maniac. And he wasn't, he wasn't anything. He was just a person that wanted high illumination, you know? Whether it was a man or a woman who could give it to him, or it was, you know, a word or hashish or something. He just constantly, he was so full of electricity. He was, you know, a lot like Jimi Hendrix or Bob Dylan or any of them guys, you know, Stones. I mean, you know, at the, you know, it's a lot, of, all of us, you know? So anyway, like, he was writing poetry and all that for a while, but that was only a short span of his life. That was only a couple years. What he eventually wound up doing was going to Ethiopia. He went to Ethiopia and he became a horseman. And uh, he was certainly most proud that he was a horseman. He was a slave trader for a while and a gun runner. He was a failure at all these, a jewel thief. He was a failure at that. The one thing that he could do was ride horses. Sometimes he would he would like ride over the villages in Ethiopia. They were like little white domes, like um, glittering triangles. They were like sort of like cones, you know, like cone guns, like muja. And so like he'd like sit up there on his horse and look down at them and everything would be glittering. And he started taking pictures of it all. He was really into photography for a while. And so like uh, still there wasn't, it wasn't totally satisfying. So what he did was he got a coffee table and uh, he carved in all the, the 88 keys of the Lord. What do you call that? Oh, a piano. And then he carved the um, he carved this piano coffee table, and was you know like working on the on on the on his keyboard. And he did that for a while, you know, and he was taking pictures. And it's like it was like a typewriter. But see, the thing that was happening was there was no music or words coming out of it. It was like you know this typewriter piano, and nothing was happening. So like, you know, he, he was like getting really, he finally got himself a piano, but he had already gotten to the state where he wanted an electric piano. The same with the typewriter, you know, they were starting to invent a typewriter there, but he was already, oh, he was ready for the IBM man. So like, you know, and they had the oud then, but he was ready for the Stratocaster. Arthur Rimbaud got sick in his illumination. He got so sick that they put him in a litter and carried him days and nights and months in the pouring rain. He was dying of gangrene and syphilis 
he was on his way back to France. He went on back to France and they put him in a hospital surrounded by nuns. He just wanted to be back on his horse or hitting on his keys. And there's all these sisters of charity standing around him, mooning around him, begging him to weep for Jesus, to cry for Jesus, to admit that Jesus was a part of him. He didn't really, it doesn't, I, even, I don't mind. He can die for my sins if he wants to. I just won't watch. I really don't care what happens at all. I really don't, you know, it's like, um, it's, all, it's all cool to me. And Arthur Rimbaud was lying there and they wanted complete definition, write a confession that you love Jesus. I mean, confessions and dogma and organized religion is what shuts, shuts, shuts out the uh, illumination. my guys, Richard Soule, J.D. Doherty, Ivan Crow, Lenny Kay. The electric prunes. <laughs> electric, what was that? I've had electric prune for about two days. Okay. <laughs> You've been off the world for 28 minutes. Where have you been at? <laughs> um, well, the nicest thing, one of the, ni the the cool things about this is we had so many. It was like it was the the, the week we recorded this. Um, it was Johnny Carson's 12th anniversary. Go, Johnny, go! You know, I've been plugging Johnny Carson a lot. You'd think that he'd give me a spot on the show, wouldn't you? Boy was in the hallway drinking a glass of white tea. What is this potion they have given to me? What is this milky substance in my tea? What is this white swirling around? 
What is this halo on top of the, what is this sailor hat in the middle of the field? What am I dancing around? What is this jam that I'm getting myself into? What is this tea, tea, tea I've been drinking? The boys in the hallway drinking a glass of tea. From the other end of the hallway, rhythm was generating. Another boy was sliding up posters. There were many, many <laughs> pictures from his imagination. There were Egyptian girls, there were black jewels, there were corridors of desire, there were green gems, there were sailor boys marching in an alien formation with their cocks flipping like Christmas trees. The boy looks at Johnny, Johnny wants to run, Johnny wants to move, but the movie keeps moving as Land. The boy takes Johnny and press him against the locker. He drives it in, he drives it home, he drives it deep in Johnny. The boy disappears. Johnny starts banging his head against the lockers. I can never love it. It's totally when suddenly Johnny gets a feeling he's being surrounded by horses, horses, horses. Took the skin of his belly 
and they tied it on four poles. When it stretched, when it stretched and dried, they rolled it around the belly of a swan, and they sewed it up with cat gut, and they covered up with silk, and they gave my bed to me. It was the bed that fit me specifically. I lay down on it. I felt at home in it. The longer I slept there, the more I felt my free melt. I was just swimming in a mattress on the sea. I was just rolling. There was a record on. There was a record on. It told of the 17th century when they pulled the black stallions from Arabia and threw them in the sea. They were too heavy for this ship. They were in the thick, fleshy latitudes. So they threw the horses into the sea. It was the 17th century, and I was listening to the record. Picks, picks of Lenny Kay and Patty Smith. Do you realize now they gotta edit all that time out of it for the radio? If I was on radio, man, I would be I would I would be heard. Heard on the radio.